Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video we are going to be looking at Catalans with bishop b4 check and we are going to be looking at two positions, bishop b4 check on move 4 which uh, is a way to avoid a ton of theory by going into the open Catalan and we will also be looking at, so that's this position, but we will also be looking at the position with d takes c4, the open Catalan move 4 and then bishop b4 on move 5. Uh, these positions are different and the, the theory behind them is different but th most of the ideas are the same and that's why I, de I decided to do them in one video because what I'm about to tell you is very important and it's also very confusing without it being, being split into two videos. So let's go back to, to some basics which I have to talk about now otherwise it's going to be hard to understand. Uh, the, the rest of the video. So after d4, uh, black has several ways to allow or go into the Catalan. One of them is to is to play d5 and after knight f3 or c4 the queen's gambit. Black plays the queen's gambit declined and after knight f3 black would play knight f6 and now g3 we have the Catalan. The other way for black to play and to allow or enter the Catalan is via the knight f6 move order so after c4 e6. Now here on move 3 there's three options for white, well four if you count a3 and, and rare moves like that, but basically white has three options, knight c3, knight f3 and g3. Knight c3 allows the, the Nimtso Indian, so knight c3 is going to go into the Nimtso and black has nothing better but to do this. Black could try playing sort of inferior variations of the Queen's Indian with b6. And as we know, the Queen's Indian and the Nimtso Indian are both light squared openings, meaning that most of the action is going to be going on on this diagonal and also that white wants to play e4, black wants to prevent e4. Now, so that knight c3 allows the Nimtso Indian. Usually players with black are very happy to be allowed to play the Nimtso Indian because the Nimtso Indian is a very aggressive opening, supposed to be uh, well, good for black in, in many lines. Therefore, most players with white, especially on the highest level, uh, are known to avoid the Nimtso Indian by playing the move knight f3. And this is the move we have, we have been looking at in the, in the entire Catalan series. So this move does not allow the Nimtso because bishop b4 does not pin the knight. Bishop b4 in this case is the Bogo Indian. And the Bogo Indian is very important for this video because we are looking at positions with bishop b4 check. Now the fact that we are looking at positions with bishop b4 check in the Catalan means nothing. You still have to understand that black would play that immediately and avoid the Catalan altogether. So we are going to have a strange mix of uh, the Catalan, the Boga Indian and the Nimtso Indian in some cases and sometimes even the Queen's Gambit declined. Unfortunately these names we gave or the theoreticians gave to these openings are just sort of fake constructions which don't mean anything. For example to Alpha Zero, when Alpha Zero plays the Catalan it, it doesn't say oh I'm playing the Catalan, it just plays the best moves. So for us it's sometimes hard to I don't understand all the transpositions and everything behind an opening because we are just we have tunnel vision about playing one thing and knowing only one thing. So the Bogo Indian starts after Bishop B4 check. Uh, the Queen's Indian starts after B6, and the position we've been looking at so far starts after D5, where White plays G3, and then either Bishop E7 the closed Catalan or DC the open Catalan. Okay, uh, one more thing. Instead of knight f3 or knight c3, white could play the third most popular move, g3, which goes into the clean Catalan, and the main idea behind this is to prevent the Queen's Indian. So you're basically restricting black to only two options, either the Catalan or the Bogo Indian Nimtsovich variation. So I'm going to show you what happens after bishop b4 check in this position. Of course, the, the main move is, is d5 and we reach a normal Catalan, which we'll see in a second. But if bishop b4 check is played, this is not a Catalan anymore. After bishop to d2 and queen to e7, this is now the Nimtsovich variation of the Bogo Indian, which starts after white plays the move g3. So let me just show you that. In this position, 
in this position of the knight f3 when white allows the bogov so bishop b4 check and bishop to d2 and for example queen e7 and g3 this is now the name switch variation of the bogo indian now again i'm going to create a whole separate playlist on the bogo uh, and it's going to make things much clearer a separate video on the rim switch variation but very similar okay so we have complications at start so you have to decide what you want to allow what you don't want to allow preferably you'd like to know what your opponent plays does he play the bogo indian does he play the queen's indian does, does he play the queen's gambit declined for you players with the black pieces who play the bogo indian uh playing bishop b4 check against the catalan is is a great idea if you're not allowed into the clean bogo okay so now finally let's let's go into the two moves the first position we are going to be looking at is after g3 bishop b4 check now uh, this is well this is a very popular line it's not a, it's not only a way to simplify into something that's not as sharp as the open catalan or even complicated as the closed catalan it's a good move and it uses the fact that uh, white has left this diagonal open and there's one idea behind it and one idea only that after bishop to d2 and the bishop retreating to, to e7 the bishop appears to be misplaced on d2 and it is misplaced on d2 and usually this is where the b1 knight should go in these variations so black does this little shuffle to misplace the bishop now this is very subtle stuff compared to what people on my level play and and try to understand but but it makes sense now instead of uh instead of bishop to d2 it's possible to play a5 uh but after bishop g2 and something like d takes c4 well, it's not considered as good as bishop e7 and it's also possible to play queen e7 which is the main one of the main moves in the bogo but it's not considered to be as good here because black had already played d5 now again this may be hard to understand but let, let me show you what i'm talking about if we play the clean bogo clean bogo meaning that after knight f3 we have bishop to b4 check you can notice that uh black is never going to play the move d6 let's see what happens bishop to d2 and queen e7 which i told you isn't as popular with when these two moves have been interposed because the, the difference between d5 and d6 is how flexible the center is going to be so g3 uh, if we have this position now knight c6 and knight c3 and for example bishop c3 bishop c3 knight e4 is is the main move and rook c1 and castles and bishop to g2 and d6 black has the small center instead of advancing with d5 so this is the only thing i can discern from the two positions which is why high level players don't play queen e7 in this position that's the only difference so there has to be something very logical behind it that being said i've checked queen e7 with an engine it's plus 0.4 for white so it's not a big deal you can play queen e7 but coming back to the to the original position after g3 bishop b4 check bishop d2 the best move is bishop to e7 and now what we have on the board after <coughs> excuse me bishop g2 castles castles is going to be very excuse me very similar to to the closed catalan we are going to be continuing with that position tomorrow and black does not have to take the pawn on c4 as is the main plan in the closed catalan he can play different things now let's get into this move in detail so castles and castles it's also possible to play uh, c6 for black on the previous move but these lines are going to transpose most often as c6 and castles are the two moves that black generally plays one after the other so c6 and now what do we see in this position well one thing we can immediately notice about black's position compared to the open catalan which we've been looking at in the last eight videos is that black has no weaknesses most importantly this bishop is shut out of the game okay uh, furthermore uh, since black did not take on c4 there's still a pawn on d5 which makes it much more pleasant for black to play in the center and it makes it well fairly hard almost impossible for white to play e4 excuse me 
But we also see that this bishop is, is a bad piece and that black is going to have to do something about that. Now, uh, playing queen c2 is the best move for white. There are alternatives. You can play bishop f4 straight away. You can play queen b3, putting pressure on the b7 pawn. You can play b3, you can play knight c3, knight a3. There are a ton of moves. But I'm going to be focusing on, on queen c2 because I'm trying to give you a way for white to play against bishop before check. Now, uh, there are a couple of options for black here. Uh, the two main options are knight bd7 and b6, and they will transpose almost always. And, well, we, we shouldn't really look at them separately. They are just very, very similar. I think knight b to d7 is now becoming more popular than b6, but I, as I said, that they transpose. And there are a couple of independent lines that we have to look at. Now, what you have to know about this position for black is that it's not a defensive position. It's not a passive position. It may seem passive for the moment, but it's in fact very aggressive. And in many lines, black is going to be playing to, to simply expand on the king side and, and checkmate. So let me show you a couple of examples. The most straightforward way to play for black to play this position, and remember we are on move eight in an almost forced variation after bishop b4 check. So let's let's get there again. So bishop d2, bishop e7, bishop g2, castles, castles, c6, queen c2. So th this is just the best way for both sides to play. Now uh, we are going to be focusing on, on knight bd7 and b6, which are the most solid and the best, but let's look at something else. Knight e4 first. Uh, whoa, excuse me. What did just... Ah, excuse me. Okay, we have to we have to look at knight bd7. Okay, knight bd7. And now after bishop f4, we branch out. Excuse me. Okay, so knight e4, the craziest of them all. Uh, if knight e4 is played, this may seem like a nothing move, and it may seem like black is just trying to control the center. Black is in fact preparing the move g5. And white now has to be extra careful. By developing this bishop to f4, which is the most sensible square, he actually gave black a target. Now, you have nothing better with white but to challenge this knight and threaten to take the pawn. But black can now play g5. And once the bishop retreats, there are two downsides. The first downside is you don't want to go to d2 because the knight could take. You don't want to go to e3 blocking in your e-pawn and maybe running into f5, f4. So you have to go all the way back. You are underdeveloping a piece and the rooks are not connected. The second downside is after bishop c1, f5 is coming. And well, this is supposed to be slightly better for white. But being on the white side of this cannot be pleasant. Uh, you still have to develop your queenside pieces. Your bishop doesn't have a ton of squares. If you ever take on e4 in this position, then well, one of these pawns, probably just the d pawn takes and three pawns march towards your king. And it's going to be hard. So what white can do is play b3, prepare to develop this bishop either to b2 on a or a3. And after b6, white prepares, to, black prepares to do the same thing. We play bishop to b2. Uh, black plays bishop to b7. We play rook a to d1. And we pretend that nothing's going on. And black pretends that he didn't start a crazy attack until he's ready to actually execute it. Now, I think being scared with... being scared and trading off pieces isn't the right way to go. Black, black needs to try and build an attack, so queen e8 in Dutch fashion and stuff like that. Uh, trading pieces I don't think is the best way to go, although knight to d2 has been played by Wesley So, and that's the, the highest rated game Wesley Saw in this position. Nakamura responded with knight d6 declining the trade. But again, black should have a, a, nice, a nice initiative, although white should be better. So that's, that's knight e4. After knight bd7, bishop f4, another quite, well, quite aggressive move is a5. It's aggressive for different reasons. It's expanding on the queen side and trying to gain as much space as possible. Also, if this bishop should come to a6, either after b5 or b6, then the, the a pawn is not blocked. So rook d1, and now knight h5. And 
Uh, in some positions, there could be a repetition here, as we are going to see in other lines. Uh, if the bishop should go back to c1, the knight could just retreat, and there have been games in, in which draws were agreed like this, because both sides just underdevelop one piece. But more commonly for, for black is to just continue b5. And in this position, black should not react. Just keep calmly, keep... well, leave black to do his own thing, you play knight e5. And after knight to e5, bishop to b7 is the main move. Taking this pawn twice leaves, of course, c6 hanging, and c6 is hanging anyway, so you have to play bishop to b7. Again, taking this pawn twice later on is going to leave c6 hanging, but still, uh, b3 can be played, knight d7 can be played, cb5 can be played, but c5, I think, is just the most promising move, and black now continues f5 and starts a counter-attack counter -attack on the king side. This variation I don't like for black, because if white knows what he is doing, this bishop is going to be bad for a very long time. And in order for it to become good, white uh, black will have to play b4 and bishop a6, but then you can see that, for example, knight c3, and if b4, this knight already has a very nice square here, and whenever this knight is traded off, in fact, you probably could traded off here and queen takes and then knight a4 and knight b6 and may not be the greatest knight in the world because it's only on the queen side it's not on d6 but it's still a very nice knight so i'm not a big fan of a5 but it, it's a move okay and then one more thing i would like to look at before we move on to the main lines is the move knight h5 which usually leads to a draw after bishop c1 and knight f6 and bishop f4, knight h5, white can decline uh, with knight b to d2, but now you're blocking in your bishop, and here black won a slight theoretical victory. So if white doesn't want to draw, he has to concede to this bishop being being locked in on c1, and when, when you see this position on the board, you, you would never guess that this bishop was on f4 already. So knight h5 is kind of a provocation, which you don't play if you are unhappy with the draw, obviously. All right, now, finally, after knight bd7, bishop f4, the normal move is b6, and this is what you want, you want, what you want to be playing. And this position we are going to see via two different move orders. As I said, black's two moves are knight bd7 and b6, and then they transpose, so let's look at b6. We will reach this main move anyway. So white plays bishop f4, we saw that. In this position, black would play bishop b7, bishop a6, uh, both of them will include knight bd7 uh, a few moves later, so don't worry, we will transpose. Let's let's look at both of them. Bishop a6 is a sideline, knight b to d2, uh, knight b to d7, uh, and rook a to c1. And the idea of, is that this bishop is just better, you don't have to play c5 at any point, but your center is not defended, the c6 pawn is not defended, knight e5 is more aggressive, if you ever take on c4, c6 is hanging. So it's more active, but it's riskier. Knight h5, now the bishop retreats to e3, and the knight drops back to, to f6. Now again, there have been games drawn like this, there have been a lot of games drawn like this, Black can de decline a draw with, with rook to c8. And white doesn't really have a good way to decline a draw. Uh, if in this position after knight to h5 you want to decline a draw, you can play e4. But knight takes f4, g takes f4, I, I don't know. It seems quite risky. e4 has been tried. I, I mean, you're going to have double pawns anyway. This is similar to the exchange Karo Khan, where black plays bishop f5, white takes it. White takes it with the bishop, though. So, bishop a6 leads to this draw offer in most cases. Although black, as I said, does not have to play uh, knight h5, black can play rook c8 if he wants to avoid the draw. And now, for example, rook f2, excuse me, rook f to d1. And now again, you can go for this knight h5 idea. And supposedly there's nothing better on the highest level because it's the most popular move, but you can also play b5, you can play c5, you can play queen e8, preparing f5, you can play b bishop back to b7, so those are the options. But bishop a6 is kind of the drawing move. The most popular move, bishop b7. And now after rook d1, knight bd7, knight e5, white 
jumps into into e5 uh, and again we now have this knight h5 maneuver so this is going to be commonly played by black so this is something you just have to know uh, the difference is that in this position we can we can retreat to d2 okay and now the knight drops back now we don't want to go back to to f4 we could but again a repetition is likely so we play c takes d5 and c takes d5 of course taken towards the center uh, in this position knight c6 is the most popular move for white rook c8 wouldn't work because of knight e7 so black has to exchange and queen takes c6 rook c8 in this position queen goes to b5 and here the queen is sort of going on a journey but black Black isn't any worse because he doesn't have the bishop pair anymore. I actually like Black's position because of this d6 square and well if, if the f pawn is gone or if the b pawn is gone or if they are unable to get to b3 or f3 this position seems very nice. The queen drops back to d3, knight to d6, knight to c3 and the other knight comes to f6. This just seems very pleasant. I think black has a very nice positional bind here and if white would like to solidify then it's not clear where this bishop is going. This bishop isn't particularly good anyway staring at this wall of pawns. So all in all I, I quite like this bishop b4 idea. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't covered everything uh, white can do of course. We've covered almost everything black can do. But in, in this main line, the, the resulting position seem, seems just very interesting. So let's go over that again. So after g3, black plays bishop to b4 check. The idea is to misplace this bishop. And as you can see in most variations, the bishop just was going all over the board and never had a safe square. Uh, of course, if you, you you have alternatives, but bishop d2 is best. If knight b2 d2, then you're blocking in the bishop straight away. So that's just not considered good. And black could in fact just continue with dc. And after bishop g2, b5, I, I, black scores much better than white in this position. And the second alternative is knight to c3. And now you get a weird Nimtso Indian, which I, I don't even know how to call this position after bishop to g2 and, and d takes c4 this is uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the variation just give me give me one second okay so I think we have transposed to the Romanitian Nimtso Indian with g3 but yeah if you hadn't played knight c3 on the on the first move then probably you don't want to play the Romanitian Nimtso Indian anyway and if not the Romanitian then you're going to end up in something else so the alternatives are just not as good. So after bishop b4, you play bishop d2, bishop to e7, bishop g2, and now black in either castle or play, or play c6, they are going to transpose. Here I would recommend the move queen c2, and black can either play knight bd7 or b6. If he plays knight bd7, then after bishop f4, he has a couple of interesting options. He can play this knight e4 idea, he can play knight h5, he can play a5. But if he starts with b6, then usually after bishop f4, people either play bishop a6 or bishop b7. Okay, bishop b7 is the main line. Bishop a6 is that drawing invitation with knight h5. Still, in most cases, we are going to be seeing knight h5. And here, as I said, white gets the bishop pair. Let's go back to the to the final position. White, <clears throat> white gets the bishop pair, but black's pieces are very active and I believe better plays than white's pieces. And I don't think either of these knights is any worse than, than, than the bishops. Okay, so that's bishop b4 and move 4. Uh, now we will be looking at this position, not bishop b4 check, but going for the open Catalan first, and only after bishop g2, bishop b4 check. Now, there's a big difference, even, even though it doesn't seem there, like there's a big difference, there is a big difference. And originally I wanted to do this in the nine videos covering the, the variations of the open Catalan, but when I started studying bishop b4 and move 4, I decided to mix them together. I believe it makes more sense. Uh, okay, so again, what are our options? We can go into a weird Nimtso, Romanitian Nimtso, or we can play knight bd2 blocking in our bishop. So we do the same thing again, we just play bishop to d2. We do the same thing as before. Now, in this position, uh, a5 is the main move. Let's just mention that if you remember from what I said in the, in the introduction, 
Oh, okay. Let's let's see. Okay, after bishop b4, uh, this is the Bogo Indian. After g3, bishop b4, we are going to or d5, we are going to get into the same uh, into the same position. Now the difference in the in the Nimtsovic Bogo Indian is that black can play queen to e7. The reason why queen to e7 can be played is because this diagonal still doesn't have a bishop on it, and therefore uh, there are no tricks on this diagonal. More importantly, the d-pawn hasn't moved. So, as we are going to see, there are no queen a4 checks. And later on, this bishop is not staring across, that, across the diagonal. Uh, when we look at the position we saw here, after bishop b4 check, bishop to d2, if queen to e7 here, which we said is not perfect, but is playable, then again, this move queen to a4 check wouldn't mean much after knight to c6 because this diagonal is blocked. If we see this position that we see on the board after g3, dc4, bishop g2, bishop b4 check, bishop d2, now queen e7 loses for black. And the reason is there is no uh, pawn on d5 and this diagonal is open. So no pawn on d7, no pawn on d5, and the bishop is wide open. So in this position, after queen a4 check, knight c6 is the only move to defend the bishop, which is attacked twice, and now knight e5, and black resigns. Uh, castles has been tried once, bishop takes d2 has been tried once, but basically this pin is going to be fatal. You don't lose a piece, but you just lose too much. So knight takes c6, bishop takes d2, Knight takes d2, b takes c6, well, excuse me, b takes c6, and then black is just busted. So, queen e7, we have to remember, loses, even though it works in all other positions. The reason is this diagonal, this diagonal. Okay, so what can we do? As I said, a5 is the main move for black. c5 is a very nice alternative. Uh, bishop takes d2 is not considered good, because after queen takes d2, exclaim, White regains this pawn uh, and, and has a very nice position. Bishop d7 is the main move, and now knight e5 simply attacks here. Bishop c6, you can take that. Uh, knight takes, and now you continue e3. And this knight is coming to a3. There is no sensible way to defend if b5 is played than bishop c6. So this is just very pleasant. Therefore, bishop takes d2 is not advisable. If black does that, just remember take with the queen. I've actually played bishop b4 and bishop takes d2 before. Okay, uh, bishop e7 is passive, doesn't work the same because this diagonal is open, that's what we played in move 4, because now after queen a4 check and bishop d7 and queen takes c4 and bishop takes bishop c6, white can simply castle and have a pleasant position. Uh, this is just superior to, to bishop d7 in the open Catalan and, and, and anything else. Okay, so we are going to be focusing on two moves, a5 and c5. c5 is the aggressive alternative, which I really like for black. And if I would play this for black now, I would probably continue c5. Uh, and, and the idea here is, well, white has a couple of options. White can take on c5, white, uh, uh, white can castle, uh, white can play queen c1, white, white can play a3, a couple of options. But the best move, I think, is simply to take on b4, which may seem weird because you are undoubling these two pawns. But after c takes b4, you now continue knight e5. So what's going on in the position? Black has the option to create a pass pawn, which we are going to allow, as you are going to see. But white has the knight, white has the beautiful bishop, the c4 pawn is hanging, queen a4 check is in the position, and it's, it's, all the pieces are just working together. Okay, so, black castles. We take our pawn, knight c6, so finally black can start developing some pieces, e3. And now there's one key move for black to, to try and equalize this position. Uh, well, okay, as you're going to see, there's really nothing better than to play e5. Black could try a5 or queen to e7, 
maybe bishop d7, but that really does seem too slow. The main way to try and fight is, is simply e5. And again, white has nothing better but to play d5. And now these, uh, these few moves that I'm going to show you have been played about 25 times and the line is absolutely forced. Now watch what happens. So we have, uh, let's go back, e3, e5, d5, b5, chases the knight away. Now, a trade happens, takes here, black throws in a queen check, king takes and then takes on c4. So now we have a position in which this pawn is far advanced and, and this bishop is dangerous. These two pawns are dangerous. Now here, uh, th there are basically two moves. Uh, knight to d2 is, I think, the best move. This has been played by Alexander Lenderman and, and I've actually seen one of his games with, with this move from 2012. a3 is the alternative, which is scores better for white, but I don't understand why. I'm going to be recommending knight b to d2. And now the line goes bishop g4 check. You go to e1. That's very important. You don't want to stay here next to these pawns. And now c3. b c3, b c3. And now there are a couple of knight moves. You can actually play knight e4. That has been played. But I've analyzed this position and I've used the engine and knight c4 seems to be a really nice move. And here, if black doesn't want to lose the pawn, then he should play e4. That's the best move. And now you simply go rook c1. And after rook f to c8, which of course is the most logical move, you continue knight e5. And what, well, what can black do? Bishop e6. If rook c3, bishop a2, then white is better. If bishop a2 is played, white is almost plus one according to the engines after king e2. The material is equal, but this pawn is weak. This rook can now finally come into the game, and this pawn is definitely more of a weakness than the c6 pawn. So, so if black plays the move c5, then I believe bishop takes b4, and don't be afraid of this forced line. I think this is very, very interesting for white, and white should be slightly better. Okay, the main line is a5. Okay, after a5, white again has a couple of options. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with all of them. There are about seven moves which are playable here. I would recommend queen c2 again to, to, to make things simple. Of course, this strengthens the idea of playing e4, attacks the c4 pawn, which is more important, and simply develops the queen. Uh, so in this position, black could play knight c6, Black could play bishop takes bishop, which is considered to be the main line. Black could also play b5 or b6, which are extremely rare. So we are going to be looking at knight c6 and bishop takes d2. Knight c6 is a sideline, and after this, simply queen takes c4. And the idea behind knight c6 is to try and trade the queens off. So queen d5 is the best move. And this definitely releases some of the pressure in the position, because after queen d3, you can play queen e4. And now if... if well, if queen c4 you can just trade and any other move to trading is inferior. So knight takes, bishop takes, and now knight takes. And in this position there's a really nice trick. Uh, and one reason why white is better is because white can castle here. You're actually not hanging knight c2 check. Because after castles, if knight c2 attacking your rook, then you can simply play knight e1. And black is now forced to take. Otherwise, if he, if he takes the rook, then he just loses two pieces for the rook. This, this knight is never getting out. So in, in this position, black would have to take, and obviously white is just better here. This diagonal is huge, and the king is still in the center. So knight c6 I don't think is very promising. Oh, it's a good move, though. Uh, it's just not as good as bishop takes d2. So, the main move, bishop takes d2. Now, again, it may seem strange what I'm going to show you now. You already played queen c2, but take on d2 with the queen. And may seem strange, but you want to take on d2 with the queen. Why? Well, you don't want to take with this knight, because that knight has moved again. It's defending d4, it's defending e5. Basically, if you take with this knight, then queen d4 is possible. You don't want to take with the king because you lose castling rights. And you don't want to take with this knight because you want it to be able to go to a3 and capture the c4 pawn. So you take with the queen. Even though the queen has moved again, you take with the queen. c6. Okay, preparing, trying to expand with b5 and, and blocking in this bishop. 
a4 stopping b5 very important knight e4 attacks the queen the queen moves again queen c2 knight d6 defends the c4 the c4 pawn white finally castles knight a6 and now this knight is definitely coming into b4 weakened with with e4 and now knight e5 knight b4 the queen moves again the knight attacks the queen again queen c1 the queen moves again black castles and now finally we get to play knight a3 the point is we left this knight on b1 so that we could recapture the pawn and after something like b6 preparing to develop the bishop then takes 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 bishop a6 and now we can simply play b3 and this position is very pleasant for white uh, I, I think this knight is a great piece and mm, well more importantly uh, white white is either going to be left with this knight or this bishop is going to have no counterpart and this knight is definitely more active than the knight on d5 even though the knight on d5 sits on a beautiful square why because it's really hard to play b5 without weakening the black structure so for example if b5 and takes and takes then this knight is already this pawn is already hanging so and on the other hand e4 can be played without any issues any consequence and it's just a pleasant position okay so uh i'm sorry if this video was very long I'm, I'm sorry if it was too complicated i know it is complicated and it took me a ton of time to try and understand all of that by myself i hope this helps and just remember that there is this idea of playing bishop b4 check against the catalan and you're probably going to go into bogo indian type of position the bogo indian series is coming soon so everything is going to be much clearer after that, thank you for watching, let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.